Hey everyone, this is Steve Adams, uh, co-founder and CEO of Tiger Medical Institute with my co-founder and chief medical officer, Dr. Matthew McNamee. Dr. Matt, how are you doing today? Good, Steve. How about you? Good, good. So we're going to get right at it today. We're going to talk about um, how Dr. Matt McNamee and our other clinicians at Tiger practice cellular-based medicine. And I guess the first question, Dr. Matt, is do you believe that our genetics are our destiny? Um, great question. Uh, I think a, a lot of us were, even I think the layman were, were more or less uh, brought up with that idea that, you know, if, if you, you got a certain condition, you know, in that basically your, your genes uh, were the, you know, kind of a more or less fundamental blueprint for that to happen. And that was, you know, kind of a, a fate, if you will. Sure, so, sure. uh, um, no, I mean, throughout the years, what we've found, I mean, the, the, when you look at the, 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 the statistics around it, it's, it, it, the number typically seems to get, you know, smaller and smaller throughout the years. So I, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm guessing right now it's probably somewhere between five to 10 and maybe 25% is wow. genetic. And then the 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 rest and, and give or take some there. I mean, you, you look at the uh, different. Um, and, and Dr. Matt, can I say, is it 5% of the reason you live as long as you do, or is the health that you have is due to your genetics, right? That's the five to 25% of. Well, the, the, could you repeat the question? Uh, my point is, is you're saying it's five to 25% of what, well, of the, what is, is your, your health, your health span, how long you're healthy, all of that. Yeah. So the, the, the five to 25 is the, the, the genetic component that really interacts with the rest of the environment to mm -hmm. translate to health span. So the other, you know, what are, what are we looking at? 75 to 90, 95% yep. is actually, you know, your environment. You know where where you're you're brought. I mean, they've done studies with two with two identical twins, right? Where they're raised in different environments, and their physiology and everything is vastly different based on just their environment, right? So, uh -huh. and the environment's not just where they live; it's what they breathe, it's what they, you yep. know, it's what they do, what they consume. Do they sleep well? Do they, you know, what's what sort of it's 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 day to day. It's always getting information. You know, um, the sure. body's always getting information from that extent. And it's so. the inner environment that the cells are living in and exposed to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so if that's true, uh, which it is, um, what uh, and you practice cellular based medicine, and what are the components, Doctor Matt? I've heard you say this before. Like uh, maybe unpack like the big two or three. I think there's three big components of cellular health and how that informs your medical practice. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Uh, there's, you know, there's, there's basically three, um, uh, kind of fundamentals that I, I typically look at with individuals. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, one has to do with, you know, the, the cell needs, certain things to function, uh, it needs energy basically, you know, mm -hmm. to, to do whatever that cell does. If it's a muscle fiber to contract, if it's a nerve cell to fire, right? So it needs some sort of an energy source. It needs to be protected from damage. Um, so uh, there's, there's all sorts of things that can damage it. And mm -hmm. then it needs an, an optimal environment to perform its job. Sure, yep. So I can I can break those down and, and give you some examples if you'd like or sure, yeah, to yeah, kind of yeah. a little bit deeper. So, you know, when, when you look at um, what things a, a cell typically needs for energy, um, one is it needs some sort of a of, of a of a substrate. We call it That's something like a little fatty acid or a sugar molecule like glucose um, that gets basically plugged into the engine inside the cell. Um, which is the the mitochondria? That's the the, the power horse that produces energy. So mm -hmm. it it needs that. It needs oxygen as well to make that energy. Um, 
And then it needs uh, things like uh, micronutrients, which are, you know, vitamins and minerals to keep that engine running properly. And you need a healthy engine on top of it, which is the mitochondria. So, so you got to look at all those different components. And if any of those are off, the end product energy will be compromised, you know, um, right. to some extent. Uh, and then when it comes to protecting the cell, um, I mean, anyone, a lot of people can just think of basic things like if you have an infection that, that can damage a cell, you know, viruses can damage cells, bacteria, et cetera. Um, things like uh, um, oxidative stress, free radical damage, um, that, that can damage a cell. Um, and then you've got, uh, you know, things like like inflammation, you know, that's another, hmm. another component um that can damage a cell um even the pollution things like that you know harmful compounds that we breathe in can damage cells toxins right um pardon toxins toxins yep 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 and then when it comes to a, a healthy environment you know it's it's simple things like um hydration uh you know ph can affect you know how well a, a cell operates you know the cell needs to be communicated to um it needs to also communicate to to others so uh, kind of catch and receive you know uh -huh. if you will um and then it needs to be part of a community you know so it's it's it needs to have a purpose sure so what's interesting to me is all of those drivers the energy you know uh and what contributes to the energy, like nutrition and oxygen and the uh, little fuel source, and then protecting it from inflammation and oxidative stress and toxins. Uh, what I find interesting is I believe that in your testing system that you do, you are able to objectively measure all those things and understand the condition of their environment. Is that correct? 100%. Yeah. And even, even part of the I guess the communication or the, excuse me, the environment, um, you know, cells need to be stimulated and they need rest. So that can even be translated to movement, exercise practices, and then getting adequate, you know, sleep to regenerate. Um, yeah. I mean, so we, we look at pretty much all of those aspects. We can measure, you know, all those things that can damage a cell. I uh, look for all of those. Um, we measure, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of people, you know, when we measure things like, you know, just your, your glucose in your, uh, um, your blood test or insulin and things like that, that can tell us how well that substrate's being delivered to the, to the cell to make energy. Um, mitochondria, we use some other tools, uh, indirectly like organic acids and things to look at. We look at micronutrient levels and all of that. Mm -hmm. We look at hormones and, and, uh, you know, we can assess for hydration and stuff as well through testing. We do do sleep studies as well to see how much, uh, how well people are sleeping. Um, but yeah, we do look at all of that. And that, you know, and I, uh, my understanding is, is when you can look at all of that, now you're in a position based on both their genetic profile, because you do test for genetics and all of these things that you've just described. Now you're in a position to uh, help them recreate uh, a lifestyle, habits, and environment that will optimize the health of their cells. Uh, is, is that an accurate assessment from a layman? Yeah, no, 100%, 100%. And what's unique is, you know, things like genetics can impact all of those things that I discussed, right? Mm -hmm. Um, in a unique way. So there's a little, there's overlap. All of those things that I discussed, if we can talk about how well they're able to get, you know, a sugar or a fatty acid into the cell or how well they're able to protect themselves from oxidative, you know, stress or sure. infections or overreact or create too much inflammation, um, you know, hormone production, all those things. So we, we there's an overlap there um, as well, I, think well. It's, and, I think it's pretty cool how you look at the genetic component and you, you, you know, ahead of time what they're going to struggle with and you're able to support them like preemptively on those. Right. I mean, I would say have a, a propensity to maybe struggle with, you look right. at and go, well, that's a high likelihood that whether you, if, if you do not have, let's say maybe signs or symptoms 
now and you don't change, let's say if you're not living the, you know, uh, I guess, uh, of, a, of, a, of a healthier lifestyle, um, yeah, you may have a higher tendency for X, Y, or Z down the road, right? Sure. But we can, yeah, we can, we can intervene early, you know, and, and right. ideally, you know, prevent those things from uh, manifesting down the road. So Dr. Matt, this is the last question. We have the eight tiger health habits, which are um, diaphragmic breathing and sleep optimization and time-restricted eating and uh, optimized nutrition and meditation and hydration and daily movement and targeted uh, supplementation based off all your testing. When you look at all of those, and as our clients work with you and our health coaches to kind of over time implement those, uh, can you comment on the power of the synergy of all of those and creating this better environment and protecting the cells? 100%. Yeah. So, I mean, let's see, kind of break them down a little bit. So, you know, we mentioned, you know, an ideal environment for cells, right? They need an adequate amount of sleep, not too much, not too little, right? Yep. They need uh, healthy stressors, but you also need, um, you know, uh, most most people that I, I see and, 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 and interact with and collaborate with, um, you know, they have either too much stress and inability to, to manage that stress. It's just, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a, it's a chronic kind of a, of a stress picture and that, you know, um, uh, affects the health of the cell. So, you know, um, whatever techniques that we use, like you mentioned, diaphragmatic breathing, um, mm -hmm. those impact the environment, you know, that impacts, uh, essentially several areas in the cell nutrient ideal nutrition even supplements can impact you know the the energy components of the cell mm -hmm. um the you know hydration that definitely plays a role um you mm -hmm. know meditation that can play a role with uh not only inflammation um but you know communication and that with the neurotransmitters and hormones that are produced mm -hmm. um Let's see. What else did we did we did I not mention? Well, there's time restricted eating also, and how that. So I mean, just so fasting, very simplistically. I mean that that that, that stimulates mitochondrial biogenesis. Fancy word for creating new 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 little engines, basically, you know, mm -hmm. for your for your cells to create more energy. So it stimulates the creation of those. So um, yeah, they all have benefit, you know, in in one sure. or more of those categories. Well, I, I appreciate your commentary on that, and. Um... I guess the last thing I would say or ask is given what we know today and how you practice medicine at Tiger Medical Institute, um, it really is empowering to individuals. Wouldn't you say, I mean, that it's there, the days of just waiting for the shoe to drop literally are over. Like if, if we can arm people with more education on this topic, and they can make a mindset shift. They they really are empowered to affect their future health. I you know what would you say to that? I I agree a hundred percent. You know I think we do our best at gathering as much um, unique information and data that we can about them. Um, uh, and sometimes, you know, I, I don't, you know, the uh, a very decent percentage of, you know, um, I guess of the, you know, when it comes to the the collaboration is on the individual, the client that we work with, to you know take that information and utilize it and take action, you know. So it's mm -hmm. it's not always just like oh here's a you know, a comp, a special supplement or, or, or something simple that you can just take, you know, we, we try to integrate, you know, lifestyle interventions as well with this, you know, some of these are opposite or, or to optimize certain nutrients that maybe they, they maybe don't want to do through diet or other means. Right. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I mean, a lot of it is, you know, uh, a wealth of information and, you know, I mean, they can, can make a, you know, a pretty radical transformation if they, if they, you know, I think take it and slowly integrate those positive, positive shifts over time. 
Well, great. Well, if you're listening and you want to learn more, um, I think the next best step for you is to go to our website, tigermi.com, tigermi.com. And uh, we've got a learning center there where you can, you know, examine articles and videos uh, of things you're interested in. And also, if you want, if you've gotten to the point where you really want to learn more of how you could proactively take control of your future health narrative as much as it is possible to do so, um, the on the homepage, just hit schedule a call and you'll talk to a Tiger professional and we can help you understand if you're a good fit. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Dr. Matt. Thanks, Steve.